Hey everyone, it's Ryan, and I love to smoke. And today we're going to review the classic Camel Non-Filter Cigarette. Introduced in 1916, these are the original of the modern packaged cigarettes to be available on the U.S. market, and currently the longest running of one single cigarette brand variety. These have been available on the market consistently since 1916 here in the United States and for about as long in most other countries as well. This was the very first variety of Camel cigarettes that were released um, up until the time Joe Camel came to be in the 1980s. Uh, Camel used a slogan, I'd walk a mile for a camel. Likely they had to stop using it because here in the United States, there are very few places that you would actually have to walk a mile to buy a pack of cigarettes. Um, pack design, uh, it hasn't changed a whole lot over its history. Um, of course, the Surgeon General's warning here that was added in the late 1960s, and of course now the barcodes uh, and the website on the pack. But otherwise, the design on the cigarettes itself hasn't changed much since 1916. Now, it is worth saying that this brand was favored by John Wayne, uh, the uh, famous Westerns actor, uh, and he was known to smoke upwards of six packs a day of these. Uh, inevitably, it eventually killed him, but he was a longtime uh, smoker of Camel branded cigarettes. Um, so let's go ahead and open these up. You will notice that this is a soft pack. These are not available in a box. Um, this pack was manufactured in May of 2022, and I purchased these at Bob's Food Mart at the corner of Illinois and Westfield in Indianapolis. And as of the date of this recording, the minimum price for these cigarettes is $11.01. And I don't know exactly how much I paid for this pack. Uh, usually with Bob's Food Mart, they're a little over state minimum on products, but uh, that's okay. So let's go ahead and open these up. So you'll see that there's a clear cellophane pull on the top. And so I'm specific about these. I usually like to open up to the right side of the uh, uh, band on top of the packs. There really is no right or wrong way to do it. It's just something I prefer. So let's go ahead and tear that foil open. And a cool trick, if you don't want to rip this tab here on the top of the pack, place your finger on it lightly when you're tearing the foil right next to it. So you'll see right here, there we go, nice perfect rip. And so I'm going to pull that completely off. And so look at that. Oh, those are beautiful cigarettes. Um, oh, that smell is so amazing. So let's go ahead and get those out. Uh, and so you'll see no filter on either end of the cigarette and you will see camel is written on the top in ink uh smell of the tobacco oh it's beautiful this is a beautiful smelling cigarette color of the tobacco is fairly light uh, it is worth noting this is a blend of turkish and domestic tobacco so some of the tobacco is procured here in the united states some of it comes from overseas uh, but this blend is mostly unaltered from uh, the original 1916 release date. Um, let's go ahead and give a dry pull on the cigarette. Just a beautiful, rich tobacco flavor coming off of it. Um, and for this video, I am using my Louisiana World Exposition Ashtray from 1984. And because this is a classic cigarette, I can't just use a plastic bic. Uh, so I actually found this box of vintage diamond brand matches. Uh, so here we are. We're going to go ahead and get started with this review of the Camel Non-Filter Cigarette. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, if you're not familiar with smoking non-filter cigarettes, you will from time to time get some tobacco on your lips and stuck in your teeth. Um, a trick that I like to use for that is just barely put the cigarette in between your lips as little as you can to actually get a firm seal and draw off the cigarette. Now, even though it doesn't have a filter, the blend of the cigarette is different, so you're not always going to have the really strong body that you might expect from a cigarette with no filter. It all comes down to the blend, how tightly it's packed, 
what uh, qualities the paper has. Um, and so let's go ahead and give this uh, body a test here. Oh, that's nice. Really, really bold body, but not strong per se. There's a lot of smoke, but it's it's kind of light and airy. Uh, and I do know in Europe, some of the non-filter cigarettes do have perforations in the paper so that it kind of dilutes the smoke. Uh, to my knowledge here in the United States, these camels do not. That is really nice. It is it is a full-bodied and strong cigarette, but not quite in the way you would expect if you're normally a filtered cigarette smoker and this just happens to be your first time trying. That's not the case. These are bold, but not quite in the way you would expect. Yeah, this is really pleasant. It does start to get warm as you get a little further down the cigarette. You will notice that if you don't normally smoke non-filter cigarettes, you tend to smoke these a little slower. Um, and that's because without a filter, you don't have to quite pull on the cigarette so hard, so you're not burning the cigarette quite as much to get a good draw out of it. So I'll show you here, for example. Just a quick couple of seconds pull, and you have a really really nice strong puff off a cigarette. The taste in here is incredible. A really nice rich tobacco flavor, nothing really too sweet about it. It is definitely a different blend of tobacco than Camel Filter cigarettes, and I personally tend to like these much more than I like Camel Filters. Uh, there's just something about the sweet in the blend of those that I'm not quite as big of a fan of, uh, but they are also good in their own respect, and they will be reviewed in a future video, but for this cigarette right here, this is really nice. Really nice, strong cigarette, but at the same time, mild. It doesn't really irritate the sinuses or the throat or anything going down. Um, back in the 1950s, before tobacco companies had to stop making health, health claims about their product, uh, Camel said they didn't irritate your T-zone, which was the mouth... Uh, ears and nose and uh, because all of those organs are connected now you don't necessarily think of ears but they are still kind of connected to everything uh, here around your mouth and nose but as I mentioned earlier as you get a little further down the cigarette it will get a little hotter um, another thing to look out for depending on how far you smoke these down you may want to get used to bringing your fingers all the way to the edge of the cigarette that you can um, because it will get hot, just like a filtered cigarette, but without a filter, it's just going to continue burning until you put it out, or it'll go out on its own with the FSC papers that they use here in the United States. And so since it is uh, worth noting here, these are shorter than standard king-size cigarettes, um, this size is known as regulars. So regulars are about 74 millimeters long. King size cigarettes are about 78. And then 100, uh, 100 cigarettes are usually 100 millimeters. But these here are known as a regular cigarette. So they're a little shorter than king size, uh, but they do still pack a punch. If you look up the tar and nicotine values of these, they're through the roof compared to most filtered cigarettes that are out there. So let's get into the ratings on these. I'm pretty much done. Cigarette, for the most part, is burning evenly, uh, but let's get the body here one last time. Nice, strong body. I'm giving that a 10 out of 10. Mm, the flavor's good on this. I'm going to give it a 9. Got a little more tobacco in my lips there. Uh, burning characteristics, burns pretty evenly co going down, uh, so we'll go ahead and give that a 9 as well. Um, so overall, Camel non-filter cigarettes, I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. They are probably the most expensive cigarettes wherever you're going to purchase them here in the state of Indiana. 
uh, minimum price for them is eleven dollars and one cent per pack, as compared to Marlboro, which is the most popular brand here in the United States. In Indiana, here the minimum price for those is seven dollars and sixty cents per pack as of the date of this recording. Now, why are these cigarettes so much more expensive? Well, there's a couple reasons for that. And Camel actually does describe that on the back of this pack where it says choice quality. Don't look for premiums or coupons. As the cost of the tobacco is blended in, Camel cigarettes prohibits the use of them. What that means is that they use a higher quality tobacco than most uh, cigarettes made here in the United States, so it costs them more. Um, other things to consider in addition to a costlier blend of tobacco, uh, in the United States there's always an effort to try and reduce the number of smokers that are out there. Uh, so classic cigarettes that pack a harder punch than today's modern filtered cigarettes are usually priced a little higher than that, which brings them down to uh, or brings them up to a, a much, much higher price. Now, I really enjoyed these so much. I'm going to go ahead and smoke another one on camera here. Oh, these are good. These are such a great cigarette. Now, if you don't normally smoke non-filtered cigarettes and, and you smoke non-filters like you would a filtered cigarette, you are going to have a hard time breathing the next day. And it is important to note, you have to be 21 years of age to smoke at, or to purchase cigarettes here in the United States. And if you don't smoke, do not take this advice as starting to smoke. There is nothing good to be gained from doing so. And as someone who smoked for 20 years, it is a pain in the ass when you're trying to enjoy an evening out to have to find somewhere that you can have a cigarette. Because just about everywhere that's out there prohibits indoor smoking, and most places now don't want you smoking in front of their building. So if you don't smoke, don't start. Um, quick tip, if you do like places to smoke indoors, here in the state of Indiana, most bars uh, do not have a problem with that until you get into big cities like Indianapolis, Bloomington, Fort Wayne, areas like that. Um, but if you get into some of the smaller towns, quite a few of them still allow smoking in bars. Um, pretty much universally across the state, veterans halls and private clubs are exempted from that. So if you're a veteran, uh, thank you for your service. But uh, you can also join uh, or go to the VFW or the American Legion. Most of those posts still allow smoking. Uh, retail tobacco stores here in the state of Indiana do still allow smoking, uh, as well as some of the casinos. Here from Indianapolis, our closest one that does allow smoking is in Shelbyville. I'm not really a gambler, so um, my data is really out of date. Um, but last I knew, Shelbyville, Indiana, you were still allowed to smoke at their casino there. And so over the years, um, in uh, it took Camel a long time to get on the track of introducing a filtered variety. So this was Camel's only variety for a number of years, I believe until the early 1970s, when they finally introduced a Camel filtered cigarette. And from that point, those have just become much more popular than the non-filtered uh, blend here. And that's because most Americans had switched to filtered cigarettes, believing that they were safer than non-filtered cigarettes. Now, there really is no data that says filters are any safer than the non-filtered cigarette. There is, however, some fairly conclusive data that shows that when smokers switch to filtered cigarettes and then to lights and ultralight cigarettes, it didn't really mitigate any of the health risks. In fact, most of the uh, people that they were observing started smoking more. They either smoked more cigarettes or they pulled harder on it, uh, but their body still demanded the level of nicotine that they were previously getting. And so filters and, and lights and ultralights really do not in any way, shape, or form reduce the health risks associated with smoking. So keep that in mind. Um, now, of course, because there is no filter, you're getting a lot more of the toxins. Uh, but you really, as far as taste profile goes, these don't have the quite step up that you would expect with a cigarette that doesn't have a filter. And that, once again, comes down to the blend of tobacco, the additives in it, and the paper that it's rolled with. Damn, these are good. 
Now, there are still a couple of other classic uh, non-filter varieties of cigarettes available here in the United States. Uh, these Camel non-filters are just one of them. Uh, there is also the original Lucky Strike, um, and I will post a review of those at some point coming up here because they are personally my favorite all-time cigarette. There is also the unfiltered Pall Malls, uh, and so those are the last of the three classic non-filtered cigarettes that are available for purchase in the United States. Now, there are lots of bargain brands that do make non-filters. Um, I tend to not like those as much because the blend just isn't quite the same, although there are some respectable ones out there, uh, one of them which will be coming up in a future review here soon uh, that I've already purchased. Um, also, where do I purchase my cigarettes from? Well, all over the place. Uh, so I travel around central Indiana quite a bit for work, and so that means that I get to try a lot of different tobacco stores. Uh, and so for some of my upcoming videos, uh, I purchased from a brand new place on the east side of Indianapolis uh, that I'll give more details about in the next video. But just to make sure that we're not only reviewing premium brands, um, I will also be uh, reviewing some of the bargain brands uh, that are available here in the state, and those are considerably cheaper uh, than these camels are. So what is your favorite brand of cigarettes here in the United States? I'm always looking for suggestions on where to pick up more. Uh, so if there's a brand that you really want me to review, make sure to leave it in the comments and I will do my best to find them. Uh, as for future plans with this review uh, channel, I am planning to do another review every week. Uh, you might notice that these are pre-recorded, and part of that's because it involves setting up a camera and not just sitting back to have a cigarette like I'm going to with these. Now, one thing I did forget to say about my review of these, will I smoke the rest of this pack? You bet your ass I will. These are an excellent cigarette. Will I buy these again? Probably. Not as often as I would like because cost prohibits it. Uh, at $11 a pack, they're almost as much as three packs of Lucky Strike filters, which is my daily smoke. Um, so these are really a special treat for me, along with Lucky Strike non-filter and occasionally the unfiltered Paul Mall as well. <clears throat> now, there are products on the market um, you don't quite see them as much now as you used to, uh, but there's this device called Targard, which is a plastic uh, mouthpiece that you put on the ends of cigarettes. And what those do is they take the tar out of the cigarette smoke that you breathe, uh, thus giving you something more like a light or an ultra light kind of taste profile off of the cigarette. Um, I've tried them before. Not really a big fan. I smoke one because I'm addicted. I've done it for over 20 years now, but also because I really enjoy the taste of cigarettes, and I think that those products really uh, kind of take that away from the cigarette that you're trying to enjoy. Um, one last thing that I'll make sure to talk about here uh, when it comes to cigarette prices, the price of cigarettes are different in every state. Um, and so I reference a lot on this channel Indiana minimum pricing because the uh, Department of Revenue has preset prices that you can't sell cigarettes any less than, although there are no rules about selling them any higher. So here in the state of Indiana, a pack of cigarettes can set you back anywhere from in the high $4 range to these being over 11 uh, But one thing that I'm noticing more and more smokers are doing, especially in lower income areas, is they're switching to roll your own cigarettes. Um, now here in the United States, there was some legislation in, in I believe it was 2009, uh, that treated regular rolling cigarette tobacco at the same tax rate as rolled cigarettes. So most companies out there that were producing bargain rolling tobacco switched to a coarser cut and started calling it pipe tobacco. I've actually tried a couple of those over the years. Uh, they're not quite the same as a cigarette, but you can get pretty close with some of them. And uh, here in the state of Indiana, you can get your cost per pack down to as little as about 70 to 80 cents for a pack of 20. So that's a huge difference, and I'm considering in the future reviewing some of those as well. So uh, if you're a fan of rolling tobacco and rolling your own cigarettes, please let me know in the comments uh, what your preferred variety is as well, uh, and future videos may cover that. Uh, so once again, my name's Ryan, uh, adamant smoker here who loves reviewing cigarettes terrible uh, habit, I know, uh, but it's fun. Uh, so thank you for watching this review, and we'll see you next time.